Welcome to the GibbsCam 2016 MTM demo. Today we're going to show you a simple little demo with a bar feed on a very simple part, nothing real elaborate here. Now MTM stands for multitask machining. So if you have a lathe which has a subspindle and a single turret or multiple spindles, multiple turrets, MTM is for you. This particular one is a, uh, a machining center that has a main spindle, subspindle, and just one turret. Now when you get MTM, the post processor that Gibbs will give you would be for that particular machine. So you'll have a drop down menu, not just a three axis mill or horizontal lays, C axis horizontal lays, you'll have a particular um, MTM for that particular machine, in this case NL2500SY. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, you're going to get your part into the main spindle either by importing or drawing up your geometry. In this case um, you used a simple saw model. And so the first thing we're going to do is extract the geometry off there just by going to the profiler and we'll extract the geometry off there. And now we have the geometry to cut this part here. We're going to look at the setup dialog. On MTM, you're going to have main spindle, this particular case, sub spindle. So we're going to start out with the main spindle. Now the stock we're using is three and a half inch. And there's three inches of material sticking out past the jaws, one inch inside the jaws. And I have a negative 10 here because uh, we're going to use a bar feed and I just want to see the extra material as we part it off. This particular part I'm going to set at Z0 and you'll see a little bit later why. Um, because this is a very simple part just to give you an idea of how MTM works. Of course our um, clearance plane 3.6 Z.1. Now initial stock means the stock is in the machine. Preloaded means it's loaded in the spindle, sticking out, ready to go. Now we have a checkbox that has, says graphic part face distance and I have six inches in there. That is not the distance between the spindles, that is the graphic part face between here and here. The reason we have six inches and not what the actual machine is, is if you had the what the distance is between the spindles, say 24 inch to uh, 40, 50 inch, you're going to have to pan the screen all the time to see the main and sub spindle, so there's no need for that. So Gibbs put in this graphic part face distance. Normally I have between six and usually 12, and that that's adequate usually to see both uh, main and sub spindle. Now as far as the tools go, I have three tools here now on. On MTM, it doesn't matter where you put these as long as you have the tool and the offset correct. For instance, I have this CNMG 80 degree diamond in position number one. This is going to be tools for my main spindle. Sitting in this direction, you can see I can have face up or face down. I want face down. That'll be a standard M3 on the rotation. Now on the uh, MTM, this drop down menu is going to be configured for your particular machine. In this particular machine I'm using there's 12 stations. So I'm going to put this tool in station number one with offset number one. Second tool is going to be 55 degree position number two, offset number two. Again, no checkbox on the insert face up because I want it down. And the third one, position three, this is going to be my part off tool. Now I usually leave a gap between the main spindle tools and sub spindle tools. You can leave a couple spaces or whatever you want. So this is going to be my sub spindle tools. You can see I also have that in position number one facing that direction, but my offset I'm going to use is 17. Now you can use any offset you want based on your machine, but you can't use the offset, the same offset that you're using for the main spindle, of course. So here I have 17. Here I have 18. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring up my utility tiles. Now with MTM you will have this utility process. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring that down there. And you'll have a drop down menu. This will be different for uh, your particular machine. First thing I want to do is do machine mode. This is going to put in the bar feed command. Of course this is uh, will be customized to however, whatever number you'd like to use. I like to use 5000 as my bar feed code. 
uh, to jump in and do the bar feed command. So I'm going to click on do it and I have my first operation. So the next thing I want to do is face off that part with tool number one. Front face, I'm going to wrap it to point one. Point one when we're done. And I'm just going to leave the uh, couple thou on the Z stock. And click on here. One thing you want to make sure here that I didn't show you is make sure you choose the correct spindle, main spindle or sub spindle here. So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to start off the OD, go down to X0, of course. And I have my first tool path. The next thing I want to do is rough with the same tool. Drag a roughing tile down, 3.6. Our material is 3.5 inch, 50 thou, 12 thou feed, and XR and Z stock. Click on here right click on the white group and tell it to move 100 thou in front of the part. Correct that, Point one. Okay, I want to finish on that surface, just a little bit past there, and we're going to click on do it. Now I have my roughing process. Next thing I want to do, finish this off, contour, tool number two, OD, I'm going to wrap it to X0. When we're done, 3.6. And again, uh, we'll just leave the feed rates there. No stock on the Z and X. Click on that face. Start at X0. Finish up here. Just a little bit past there. And now I have my finish path here. If I go to cut part rendering, you're going to see face off. Speed that up a little bit finish pass. So everything's done on the main spindle. So the next thing we need to do is bring up another utility. And the first thing I'm going to do is we're done with the front side. I need to bring my part off tool over here. So I'm going to go to move tool group. And it needs to know what tool we're going to move. So I'm going to click on number three. And I'm going to the main spindle. I'm going to give the new location. I'm going to leave the machine home for the X location. That'll be your G28 or G30. And the part Z is going to be the end of this part here. And the Z, I don't want to leave my turret clear at home and have the sub spindle come forward, then the turret come over. I want to move the turret there ahead of time. So I'm going to click on user. I'm going to tell it to go to Z0 with the tool tip of the tool. That would be this tip right there. So I'm going to bring it right to Z0, click on do it. Okay, now the turret has brought the tool over to Z0. Next thing I want to do, sub spindle in. Parts in the main spindle, spindle on 1500 RPM. I don't need to sync the spindles for C, I just need them to turn the same RPM because we're not having milling on these, so there's no timing issue, as long as they turn the same RPM. Z clearance means how, where do you want to wrap it to in front of this part? I'm going to stay an inch away. Feed rate, I'm going to do 20 when it feeds onto the part. And if that was zero, in Gibbs you can just hold down the Alt key, click on that point there, and you can see negative one. You can also do torque sensing. Okay, click on do it. Now the subspindle has come forward. Next thing I need to do is open the chuck, have the subspindle pull the material out, and then we'll part it off. So the next utility I'm going to do is I'm going to do a part shift with the subspindle pulling. Same RPM, feed rate of 20. Now on here, if you figure the, to come up with the correct calculation, let me bring up some dimensions here. We'll just dimension this real quickly. Okay. Okay, so we have some dimensions here. Let's just pull these up a little bit. Turn that back on. Okay, part shift. Zero that out, just so we'll start over. So my overall part length is four inches, so I'm going to put four inches in there. Then I'm going to add the width of my part-off blade, which is eighth of an inch. 
And if I was going to leave stock on the back side and the front side for the subspindle, I would leave stock there. But in this case, we're not. So I'm going to pull it four and an eighth inch. So I'm going to click on do it. So now the subspindle is pulled apart out four and an eighth of an inch. Okay. Next thing I want to do is, of course, I want to part it off. Just a straight contour with that tool. 3.6, rapid two. I'm going to click on cut off so Gibbs knows we're cutting it off. I'm not going to do any 90 degree lines. Slow the feed down. No stock or anything. I'm going to click on the front here. Now you're probably saying, why is he clicking on the front? Because the back of the part's here. You have to remember that we have already pulled the part out. So actually this point here is at Z0 now. So we're going to part off now. Do it. So we part it off turret goes back home. Now we don't want the turret to go back in the Z because the subspindle is still forward. So I'm going to pull up another utility and I'm going to do move tool group with the same part off tool and I'm going to leave everything the same here. Click undo it. So now once the part off tool is parted off the turret is going to go straight up in X and wait there until the subspindle returns. So now the next thing is subspindle return. 1500 RPM, spindle on with the part. And we're going to leave the main, we're not going to open the main chuck because remember the bar feed, the material is still in the chuck. And we're going to click on do it. So now if we do a cut part render, Let's rewind it a little bit. And if you go to the stops here, I'm going to put a checkbox where it says stop at part load and unload. So it doesn't go through there without you seeing everything. So I'm going to rewind it, play it. Finish pass. Okay, the subspindle has come over. It's going to pull the part out. Part off's going to come over part off and back home. Then the subspindle is going to return home with the part. So now we need to program the subspindle. Now I need to bring this material over here, especially if it had milling on there so we can pull all the geometry off we need to. So temporarily I'm going to turn off my cam palette. I'm going to select my solid and the geometry. I'm going to go duplicate and translate. Now we're doing, going to do a little bit of math in there. Remember we have the six inches in there. And then we have our overall part length. So plus four. And of course you have 10 inches. Just want to do it one time. So now we have our exact same part over in the subspindle. Now notice since this is a solid model, if I click on one of the solids, they both highlight. That's because all we did was duplicate and translate. We didn't tell it to separate. So we want it to separate. So we're just going to click on here. Bring up our 3D palette, click on the scissors, and now you can see there are two separate solids now. So if I move one, it doesn't move the other one. Okay. But notice they're blue, which means they're still in the same coordinate system as this first main spindle is. If you go to our coordinate systems, you'll see Gibbs automatically puts in the six standard coordinates. You can create more as you need to. But you see these are main spindle, sub spindle. Notice if I click on sub spindle, everything turns purple, which is telling you that this geometry is in another coordinate system. So to fix that, I'm going to go to my ZX plane subspindle, which is turning, click on the solid, double click the geometry, and just go over here and right click, tell it to change the coordinate system to this coordinate system right here, the ZX plane of subspindle. Now you can see purple over here, blue over here. If I go back to ZX plane main spindle, you'll see blue over here, purple over here. You can always right click the geometry and change it to whatever coordinate system that's in. So now we're going to work on the back side here. First thing I want to do, face off with my subspindle tool. Now don't forget to click on subspindle because you're not working on the main spindle anymore. Front face, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Now you're not going to sh see, this, see this dialog reverse because uh, a lot of different machines out there and they don't have the same uh, X, uh, Z position. Uh, so Gibbs has to make it universal for everybody. Um, everything here is still the same. We'll do a 50 thou. 
arc in, arc off there. And again, same thing we did before. And we'll face that off. Okay, now I need to use the same tool. I'm going to rough it again. Okay, 3.6. Everything looks good there. Make sure you're on subspindle. Okay, again. Just going to go a little bit past there and uh, make sure direction's correct and do it. So now we have our roughing. Next thing to do, contour with our finish tool. Again, OD, going to wrap it to zero and 3.6 when we're done. And a uh, little uh, line in is fine there. Make sure you're on subspindle. We'll start here. Course that direction. Going to go just a little bit past that point there, and we're good. So now, if I do a cut part render, let's start over. Finish pass. Subspindle will come over. Pull it. Part off. Back home. And again, finish off the backside. And we have a finished part. The only problem is when we rewind it, notice there's still a part in the subspindle. So if the subspindle comes over without dropping this off, you're going to have some uh, bad things happen. So we need to, last operation, tell the machine to eject the part, put it in the parts catcher. So again, we're going to do a, another utility. This time we're going to do an unload spindle, not a manual chuck. We have a parts catcher on this. So I'm going to use the subspindle. It has the parts catcher. I'm going to move the subspindle forward by 8 inches. So it drops it in the bucket. And click on do it. Now if we do our cut part render again. Okay. Over to the part off. We'll keep going there. Okay. Now it stopped again uh, because we told it to stop over here before unload and load. So you click play again and you'll notice it disappears because the parts catcher gave that. Of course, if you run uh, machine sim, you'll see your machine and everything doing that. But that's all you need to do for MTM. Quick little um, demo here. Don't forget your main spindle, sub spindle. Make sure your sub spindle has the same clearances as the main spindle. A couple other variations you can do. You can start out with a part in the sub spindle and main spindle. Sometimes that's faster. If you want to use the roughing tool to rough the main spindle, and then rough the subspindle before changing tools. So depending on what kind of part you're doing, sometimes that's advantageous to, to do that. So thanks for watching.